One of the most basic but important techniques that you need to learn if you're going to be good at Photoshop is how to select objects in a picture and how to select them accurately. Additionally, knowing how to open a picture file, knowing the different types of picture files that you can work with, and how to save a picture file are equally as important. So the first thing I want to do in this video is to briefly go over the different picture types. Digitally speaking, when your camera takes a picture, the picture is stored as an image format. The top three formats for images are JPEGs, PNGs, and TIFFs. Now JPEGs are what I call your basic image format. They are great as photos, illustrations, and graphics. Uh, we use these when a small file or image is required. And I'm not talking about uh, size as in inches. I'm talking about how much digital space they take up on your computer. Like, have you ever heard the phrase, the file is too large to send by email? That kind of gives you a sense of what I'm talking about. JPEGs keep things very simple. They work great for digital presentations as well as printed presentations. If you don't know what to save your work as, a JPEG is a really great general choice to choose. Now, pings are very similar to JPEGs. They might be a little bit more clear as, in terms of resolution of the picture, but the feature I want to really point out about pings is that they are the only image format that can support a transparent background. Now, a transparent background means that you see an object, but the background is invisible or see-through. That comes in handy if we want to add objects or people to existing photos. I have a whole video that goes through how to do transparent backgrounds, so stay tuned for that. But I just wanted to make sure that you guys understood that pings are the only image format where the transparent background is recognized. TIFFs are awesome when you need to physically print something. They are generally for more high resolution images. And if you have flyers or posters or just even pictures that you want to print crystal clear, you want to save that image format as a TIFF. Now that we know the three top image formats, let's learn how to open an image in Photoshop. Now I found these two images on a website that hosts royalty free images. One is an interior and the other one is a person on a white background. Now if you don't have these specific images, you can certainly find or use images of your own choosing. To save these images from the website onto your computer, simply right click on the image on the screen, choose Save Image As, and save them in a folder that you can remember where to find them. Once you have the images saved to your computer, you are ready for the next step. Now when I open Photoshop, I can open images using either the open button here on the home screen or I can go up to file and choose open from there. In the window that pops up, navigate yourself to where the images are saved on your computer. Click on one of the images, I'm going to choose white room, and you'll notice that it highlights in blue and that's how you know it's selected, and then click open. As you can see, Photoshop replaces that blank white canvas that you get when you start a new project with the image that you open. So this is our new canvas. Let's open the other image for some more practice. So I'm going to go up to File, go to Open, and I'm going to choose the other picture, and then click Open. Now that both images are open in Photoshop, we can toggle between them using these two tabs located underneath the option bar. So here's this one and that one, this one and that one. Look at you, you have accomplished two of the four things that we set out to learn today. You're doing great. All right, well our next goal is to learn how to select colors or objects on these images. So I'm going to concentrate on the interior photos. So let me switch over. And the selection tools are located over in the toolbar. They are the second, third, and fourth button commands from the top of the toolbar. 
Photoshop calls selection tools marquee tools. So we're going to start with the uh, shape marquee tool, which is located right here. Uh, it looks like a dashed oval, basically. So my goal with this is I'm going to click on it and I'm going to bring my cursor over and you notice that the cursor kind of looks like a crosshair now. So that indicates that uh, basically we have a command activated and we're about to draw. So yes, we do command Photoshop to do our bidding in these things. So to draw the oval actually around the chair, know that you first click to start the oval, but then you got to hold the clicker down and then let go to finish the oval. So click and hold, drag it down, and try to get the chair in there all the way. There we go. Now there's two things to notice at this point. First, did you get the entire chair inside the oval? If not, the way you deselect what you drew is to hit Control and D on your keyboard at the same time. So Control D, there we go, and it deselects basically. So let's try that again. So I'm going to click on the dashed oval. This time I'm going to try and come over a little bit more and our goal is to try and get the chair completely in, which that looks pretty good. Now there's a, another trick. If you hold down Shift, you'll notice that you get a perfect circle. So maybe you want to do a circle. I kind of like the oval, so I'm going to stick with the oval, but again, if you want to get a perfect circle, you use the oval, but you hold shift while you're drawing it. Now I'm going to let go of my cursor, and we have the chair completely within the oval. Now the second thing I want you guys to notice is once you get the shape border accurately surrounding the chair, you notice that the border is marching around like ants surrounding a picnic basket and we actually do affectionately call the uh, the effect the marching ants effect. So anything inside the marching ants or inside the border is what is selectable and able to be manipulated. So let's look at a couple things that we can do to manipulate this selection that we have. So the first one is to move and that's the very first tool in the toolbar. It looks like crosshairs with arrows on them. So if you click that and then you click inside the selection, you notice that you can actually move it out, right? So that's pretty cool. To get the selection to go back into the space, I'm going to do a control Z or you can come up to edit and do undo move. And you'll notice that there's also a redo button. So if you feel like you need to redo something that you undid, you certainly can go kind of back and forth. So undo move and it goes right back into place. Another adjustment or manipulation I want to show you is up in the image in the menu bar. If you go to image and you go to adjustments, this is where you can play with a whole bunch of different things. So for instance, if I want to turn that section black and white, I can come down here to black and white and this little window pops up. I'm going to make sure preview is checked and you can already see that it's already black and white and you can kind of play with colors a little bit. Maybe I want to uh, adjust greens or something. I'm not sure if that really does too much, but uh, it's a way that you can actually, anything inside the circle can be manipulated differently from what's outside of the circle. So I'm going to hit cancel on that. And the other one that I want to show you is the filter. So this is kind of like your photo filters on your cell phones. Filter, filter gallery, and this is where you can come in and kind of decide like what is this going to look like in here? Do I want to do colored pencil look? Do I want to do a poster edge look? Paint dabs? Ooh, that's kind of cool. Um, but you can see how it's photorealistic on the outside and then wherever that the border is that you actually drew, uh, you can see that it's changing it. So watercolor, there we go, that's a little bit more obvious. So. That's pretty cool, huh? All right, well, I'm going to hit cancel. And so that just shows you like when you select something, what you can actually do with it. So we were able to draw the circle or oval around the chair. There are other shape options that we could use. Do you see the little white arrow that's right underneath that little oval? Well, that little white arrow indicates that there are other commands located underneath. So simply hold your clicker and let go for a couple seconds and you can see that it kind of reveals a secret panel of sorts. So here's the rectangular marquee tool so we can draw exactly what we did just 
more rectangular. There's also rows, so columns and rows that you can actually do. And that's all there is to shapes. Well, let's deselect our selection and make sure our picture is back to normal. And let's look at some other selection tools that are available to you. Now the third button down on the toolbar holds selection tools that allow you to customize your selections beyond basic shapes. And if I hold my clicker down on the button for just a couple seconds, you'll see the hidden panel appear. So first we have the lasso tool and it is a free handed selection tool. Simply click and drag your cursor free-handedly around the chair just like that and then finish where you started and it'll automatically understand that that's where you want to go and then just let go of your clicker. This tool is great for general selections but it's really sensitive to hand movements. I mean you can kind of feel it being a little weebly wobbly as you draw. So again let's practice that one more time to deselect do a control and D on the keyboard together at the same time. And let's draw around the plant this time. So lasso tool, click and drag. And you know, like I said, we can get really customized with this if you want. Try to have a smooth, steady hand. Finish where you started. And there you've got the plant selected. Now we are able to get closer and more customized of a selection with this tool than the shape tools that we did, but we do want to get closer still. So I will deselect this, control D, and I'm going to zoom in on the chair. So there's two ways to zoom in. First is to use control plus or control minus on your keyboard, which is usually located next to the number zero. So control plus to zoom in and then I can use the scroll bars on the side to kind of reshape where I'm at. Or you can use the magnifying tool over in the toolbar right here and you click and drag to either go in or go out. And you might have to play with it a little bit to understand how it behaves for you. But what I want is the chair to be somewhere around here where it's kind of nice and big and easy to follow. Maybe I'll get it a little bit bigger and we'll move it up. Something like this is what you want your screen to look like. Now the polygonal lasso tool is a great option for tracing objects with straight lines. So I'm going to come over here. Here's the polygonal lasso tool. And this works a little bit differently. You're going to click. You're not going to drag. So click to start. Here we go. Now we're tracing. And you click every time you want to start a new line or a new trace. Just kind of click around so you can kind of see how it works. You're just clicking away. And I'm actually on the border of the chair. Click, click, click until you come back to the beginning. Now you see that little circle that happens when you get close to uh, where you first started? That just means it's going to close your selection and get the marching ants. So as long as you see that little circle at your cursor, you know that you're good to go and you can click and there you have your chair selected. And it's very snug and it's very tight, right? The only problem is that this chair has curves. So if we were trying to snugly select this chair with this tool, we couldn't really accurately get the curves correct. So let's try another tool. I'm going to deselect. So again, control D to deselect. And I'm going to hold my cursor over and get the hidden panel to come up. And we're going to go to the magnetic lasso tool which is a pretty cool little tool and you might need to watch this first before you actually try to do it yourself. It begins very much like the polygonal tool. I'm going to click and but I'm going to not drag. I'm just going to move my cursor slowly along the edge and what you see is it acts like a magnet and what it's doing is it's detecting the difference 
between pixels at the border of the chair. And then it drops these little nodes to indicate that it knows where it's following. You can see where it's been. And you can always adjust the nodes if you need to. So again, it's detecting the color differences of pixels at the edge of the chair. Now when we come to areas where it's closer in color between the uh, chair and the rug, you can always click to drop a node and change directions if you feel like you need to. And it's tricky because you can see that it's not going to just automatically know where you want it to go. It's only reading pixels. It's only as smart as the picture, I guess. So you have to be a little bit careful and you also have to go very slow. If you go too fast, you miss how to uh, pick up what you want it to pick up. So again, we're kind of coming in here and then around the curves it kind of does a good job, kind of doesn't. <laughs> it is still a hit and miss type of selection, but it definitely can get things. This picture is hard because the chair is white, the background's white. Um, when you have a better color differentiation, it actually magnets to it more. And I am personally in the habit of any time that I turn corners or do something more than like a 90 degree angle, like a 45 degree angle or anything like that, I just automatically drop a node so that it understands like where it needs to be. So like here I'll drop a node, here I'll drop a node, drop a node, and then it'll automatically node itself. I come around. It's a slow process, but I come to where there is a circle. I know that that means Photoshop's going to close my selection and there it is. We are pretty darn snug to this chair now. It's not perfect. There is a, another tool that can snugly and more precisely help you uh, select an object with straight lines and curves. However, it does require a little bit more explanation and practice. So I'm going to create another video to help you learn how to do that selection tool. But for now, the lasso, the polygonal lasso, and the magnetic lasso tools give you more precision in your selections than the shapes do. The last two tools that we are going to use are accurate as well, but they select objects and colors a little bit differently than the ones I have just shown you. Mm -hmm.